The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the countries. It's Mark from Solicam. We'll be starting our 30-minute free training session today for Solicam Live. With me, as always, is Kevin Rankle. Hey, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? So today, we actually have an email from Brian. Brian's in attendance, perfect. Uh, and uh, I wanted to do this uh, today with Brian's email because he's in attendance. He wasn't here yesterday, so this was actually something I received yesterday, uh, only because there might be some follow-up questions, because this is the kind of thing that is a good question, but it's really based on the scenario. So I wanted to see if there was any additional details that uh, either Kevin and I could add or, uh, or Brian adds to the situation. But let me just pull up snapshot of his email, uh, and let me read this to you guys. So basically, here's the setup. You have at least two classes of machines, or maybe two machines, more than two, uh, and they have different machine tool tables. So we're talking about tool tables today. So on machine A, tool 18 is a one inch, five flute end mill, while on machine B, tool 18 is a drill, but tool four is that one inch, five flute end mill. So basically, I'm assuming, Brian, that this means that on both machines, there is a one inch end mill. They just have different tool numbers. Uh, now, you program a part for machine A, so setup, probably fixturing, MAC locations, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then you decide you need to move that to machine, machine B. So pretty much everything is probably the same. Uh, even if you change your post to the second machine's post, um, everything's the same. iMachining will recalculate. The only thing that becomes an issue is, like he says there, you need to transform the tool numbers. So uh, just kind of skipping ahead. So what would you do in the case of you've got machine A, machine B, you're running the same part on both machines, but the tool lists are different. Uh, so I thought today would be one of those kind of things where I give my answer, Kevin gives his answer, and then we can kind of do a little bit of a, a, a live discussion about what we would do. Now, in my case, uh, right off the bat, I know uh, Brian, even I think, even says it at the end of his uh, little email here. Uh, so what do you think the fastest way? Uh, actually, I think I cut it off, but yeah, I think Brian agrees with me. Probably going forward, you just make sure that the tool list is the same for both machines. That's probably just the simplest thing. So that's more of a procedural answer. Uh, just going forward, make sure your, your, your shop procedures are that you have a dedicated tool list for whichever machine goes on there. That's what I did in my shop because we had two machines. Um, they had different offsets, different setups, but the parts were the same. And I just made sure that the tooling was the same, so that way I don't have to worry about this exact situation that Brian brings up. But let's say it's an older file, and it comes before you've, uh, you've you created it in the past, before you implemented these shop procedures. So how do you deal with the differences in tool numbers? Uh, well, there's, in my opinion, probably two ways to do this. One is in your text editor, whether it be Simcoe, uh, uh, Ultra Edit, Predator, whatever ones you're using, there should be ability to do a find and replace. That's probably the easiest way to do it on the on the NC side of things, the tech side of things. So instead of that tool 18 for machine B, we just do a find and replace of all the tool 18s, replace them with tool four, and then the code should work. Uh, in a similar way, you can do it inside SolidCam by going to your tool table. And let's say I'm using that tool 63, but on this machine, it's no longer tool 63. It should be tool, let's say tool eight. Well, I just have to go over here. Part of the, that definition is the fact that it's called tool eight. So save and calculate, and now you can see that these are all called tool eight. So make that change, recalculate, re G code, and then you have a new file for your machine B that has the proper tool number. Really, it's a quick change like that, uh, and you're just re recalculating the, the tool path. That's probably the easiest way to do that, uh, other than if you were to go and uh, bring in uh, a new tool, with the proper tool number, reassign it, that sort of thing. These are, this is assuming that the tools are exactly the same. And I think that's what Brian says in the question panel there. Uh, they're just different tool numbers. They're the same tool table for machine A, machine B. Uh, but I'm curious, Kevin, what, what would you do in that situation? You have the same part for two different machines, two different tool table sets. How would you address the tool numbers? Um, this one, it's, it's not the fastest way, but it would be going forward probably the easiest way is what I would do is do a save as. So we got uh, right now solid cam live, if I, uh, whatever, do a save as. Yeah, the date, the date that we did that yep. and then save as. And then we can and label this as, as, you know, machine B or, you know, however you, that you would want to label it. And then at that point, import your tool library. And so let's say going forward, if this is a reoccurring job, 
but you don't know which machine you're going to be running it on. You can be running it on machine A, or we could be running on machine B, but we just don't know at the time. And so instead of going back and forth constantly renumbering and reordering tools, doing it this way, you would have a dedicated CAM project just for machine A, and you would have a dedicated CAM project for machine B with all the correct tool numbers in there as well. So um, like I said, it kind of depends, you know, if this is a one-off thing that happens one in a great, once in a great while, uh, like we talked about, we could just do a uh, copy and replace on the G code um, yep. or change up the tool numbers in the, in the, uh, the uh, tool table and just uh, reorder the, uh, the tool number in that way. But um, that would be the quickest way. But like I said, if this is a reoccurring job that's commonly coming through, and this is kind of what we did at our old facility, is we would create tool libraries with dedicated tooling. So on our Makinos and our Mazax, all the tools, well, I shouldn't say all the tools, but tool one through 20 were always the same tools. Those tools never came out. Um, they had their own dedicated tooling. So we had a tool library set up for that one. So that would be the one that would automatically bring in right away. And then I could ad add additional tools to that at th that time too. So. Yep, and that's kind of why I brought up the window we're looking at right now. You can see where my mouse is, where it says related machine. This is basically what Kevin was just talking about. When you load that post, the post that's listed there, the first library that pops up when I click on import library would be the library dedicated to that machine. Even further, I think we covered this in a previous SolidCam Live class, in the VMID of that post, you can tell it to automatically populate that tool table with that tool library that is set up this way. So uh, in Kevin's scenario, if you loaded machine A, it would load the tool table for machine A. If you loaded machine B, the post for machine B, then that tool table for machine B automatically populates your list. So that's one way that you can get it to automatically make sure that the tool, tools that you're using are correct from the beginning. Uh, so Brian demos a little more about the fact that maybe you already did all the work and you're just trying to account for the changes that you discovered after the fact. but um, shop procedures, standard operating procedures, those are always good things to implement, especially when you have the time outside of, you know, programming to take a look at your workflow. This might be more of my engineering background thinking about this, but uh, you, when you do that kind of stuff ahead of time, then it makes things easier down the road. So it's like Kevin said, if you've got the dedicated tool, uh, the tool carousel already set up and you've got that tool list already ready to go for machine A, anytime you go to program for machine A, load that tool table. You load for machine B, load that tool table and it makes things easy going forward. Um, so that would be what, uh, I, I guess, Kevin, would you, do you have anything else to add for, nope. for the, for the nope. scenario? And, okay. and just for uh, reference for everyone, let's mark, let's go ahead and open up that uh, VMID file and it, let's just show them where that option is in the air, in there. Can't talk today. I believe that was. So we go to, yep, working style and click on general. Or no, I'm sorry, you're already there, working style. And over on the right hand side where it says machinist tool table name. So this yep, is where exactly. you guys can go in here and per post processor set up um, a way to, uh, you know, automatically bring the, that in there. Now, let's say you are using your Haas post for four other machines. Um, if you guys just let the post guys know that you would, um, if we could, if they could just make a copy of that and just label it as machine A, machine B, machine B, C, you know, and so on and so forth. So then you each uh, VMID file could pull from a different tool library too. So. Yep. And in terms of the VMID that you're talking about, the post is the same because yeah. that yep. translates what you do inside yep. SolidCam into yep. the G code. But what Kevin's referring to is if you had four different VMID files. That way, in each VMID file, you could set up a different tool table. Yep. That might get a little confusing after a while, but I mean, you can you can play with that, and and if that's your operating procedure, then that's your operating procedure. Uh, okay. So Brian has a question. Uh, can you export the part tool table in an editable form? Use a script of some kind. All the changes in one go. Then import it back. Um, yes. In a way, remember that it was not that long ago we just covered uh, using Excel. So you could actually do that, but that would not be any different than if you went back and just imported uh, your proper library well, or did, or do what I just did here with the changing of the tool numbers. What I'm thinking what Brian is, is kind of getting at is, and I'm assuming, Brian, you're really good with Excel. And what you can do is you can actually export that tool out, build a 
small little uh, algorithm so it automatically changes the tools for you in that algorithm with the Excel formulas and then automatically import them back in there and you could do it that way but that but once you import it back in you you're basically importing a brand new set of tools. You'd have to reassign oh, yep, them to each yep, tool, table, yep, that's or right, tool, that's correct. tool yep. path. So you're not saving too much time in that way. So there is a way to do it, but that I don't think that would be the best solution for what you're trying to do here. If you're trying to do less clicks, less work, uh, it's the find replace in the G code, or it's basically just coming in here and changing the numbers themselves. So if we knew that tool eight Originally was that tool 63. I just did a second ago. I just changed that number. As soon as I save it, it just changed the tool number in the toolpath. I don't have to recalculate the toolpath. I don't have to wait here for this HMS, uh, or sorry, this HSM or the 3DI machine to recalculate. I could just G code it right from here. Yep. So it's essentially three clicks changing the number, recalculate, uh, or, or save and calculate, and then. Uh, and then G code, or not even have to calculate. You could just post it from here. Um, but the the standard procedure that I would say is uh, tool list. Just standardize it. Uh, okay, so there's Brian. So uh, there's no way to do that number change in an offline batch because okay. So lots of different tools. Okay, so let's say the whole list is off. Uh, nothing's the same. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, I don't think there's a, a, a better way to do it than this way. Uh, because if you were to output, like like you were just asking, if you output it, change the numbers, and re-import it, you're basically re-importing a brand new tool list, regardless if you did it inside Telecam or you did it in Excel or anything like that. So it's going to be considered to be a new tool that you're adding. Yeah, uh, so I mean, you could go into each tool path and change the, the tool, but you have to go into each one of these to change it from tool 63 to tool 8. Well, let's do this. To um, maybe clear the air a little bit. Go ahead and import in a tool library. Yeah, let's do a larger tool library. Yeah. Let's go with. <laughs> no, that's the same one. Okay, let's do this one that has your name on it. Kevin, help. And there's nothing in there. Nothing in there. Um, so let's do the general. Them. Let's do the general. Okay. So let's say these are Brian's tools. Now, um, there's quite a few tools in here, and just grab, yeah, grab like 15 of them, or yeah, there you go. Just something like that. Yep. Okay. So I'll click the white arrow to import what I selected. And now all those tools have been added. Yep. And you can see there's duplicates in there. But what you would have to do now, like what Mark is saying, is each operation you'd have to go and back and relink them to that new tool versus that old tool. So even if we export it out of library, brought it back in, we can't come in here and delete all the tools for one, because the tools are attached to the operations itself and it won't allow you to delete that tool. And then two is when we import those back in there, we would have to assign those tools back to that exact operation itself. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, so, Brian, there's uh, there's no easy way of going, of uh, what doing the export and re-import in, um, like that. And Brian, is this, are these like reoccurring jobs on your uh, shop floor that you're doing this with, or is this just like a one time, or two times, this happens to you? machine loaded tools in okay yeah yeah it makes sense so yeah so loaded tools in haste basically just uh probably setup guy just was like okay you need these tools okay put them in not even thinking about the tool number um what i would also add on to what kevin was saying about those dedicated tools for the post or dedicated tools to the machine is if you want to make sure uh, that the tool number doesn't change when you uh, after you load it and no one goes to change it there is the ability we don't usually bring this up that often but you can actually make a tool permanent what that means is every time that this to this tool is in a tool table in a general tool table global library or brought into this tool table you can't actually ha change the number anymore 
because you've made it permanent, meaning that for, for going forward, this tool three is always tool three. And you can do that to your dedicated library so that you make sure that for machine A, tool three is always that three, uh, three eighths drill. You can, you can always make it um, non-permanent and then change it back. But if you wanna make sure that there's no mistake when you bring it in here and you don't go and change this by mistake or anything like that, you can always make it a permanent tool. And then what that does is that keeps that as permanently number three in whatever station it's in. Yeah, and that kind of goes back to the fact, like uh, I was telling you guys, uh, when we created a machine tool table for the dedicated tooling in there, we would, um, when we generate those tools or for those perm, those permanent, those dedicated tools that were in there, we would label all those as permanent because, like I said, those would always be in pot one through twenty pots. So, no matter what, those could not get overwritten. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your, your question, Brian. Perfect, okay. Uh, all right, so let's get out of here. Uh, let's see, so we've got some time left. Uh, so if if we've got a little bit of time left, I was thinking we could pick up on, a little bit on what we talked about yesterday. I think there was maybe one last thing, Kevin, that you had with respect to accelerating your, your yeah, calculation. And that, yeah, and that was in a um, in the 3D I machining. And there was a, a short little video on this um, <laughs> about a year and a half ago. And if we go ahead and just pull up, yep. So if we go under a motion control now, I can't remember if it's under motion control or miscellaneous parameters, I think it's miscellaneous parameters. So we have the fit arcs in here. Now, one thing to remember is 3D I machining is not your finishing tool path. You can use it as a finishing tool path, but we are more, 3D I machining is more geared towards roughing the material out. So, and by default, it automatically puts in 15 thou for our wall or floor and every surface around it. So what we can do, is to speed up the process, we can change up our cutting angle, angle tolerances as well as the the tolerance uh, or the, the cutting angle, yeah, cutting angle tolerance as well as the tolerance under below, and really speed up our um, our calculation time as well as our machine time because now we're not we're not focusing. On a fully 3D part, we're not looking at all the little itty bitty facets and triangles in there. We're more worried about, hey, plus or minus, you know, five thou on a surface, we're fine with because we're just roughing it out at this stage. So I'm not worried if it's leaving, you know, um, 15 thou or 15 thou five tenths on there. As long as it's getting somewhat close, I'll be happy. So this will reduce the amount of G code as well by uh, changing around these tolerances. And depends on the post that you're running this on, um, definitely you can check it out. And I can't remember, like I said, it was a year and a half ago, but with, um, maybe Mark, let's just do a, a comparison on a, a 3D I machine and, and we'll play the, the tolerance through and G code it out and just see uh, the amount of G code that's produced. And let's put it at the, actually, is this already, let's see what this is. If this is already a G, uh, 3D I machining, then we can just G-code this one. Yes, it is. Okay. So, G-code. And how many line numbers are we at? We are total just under 5,000. Okay. So, let me just write that number down. Oh, okay. You're fine. Uh, yeah, I'll 40. bring it up. So 49.86. Oh, you can just keep it open. There you go. Well, I'm not closing. I'm yep. just minimizing yep. Yep. it because yep. we're yep. about to do uh, yep. the change here. So maybe let's put uh, a tolerance in. Let's just try leaving that one alone and let's put 5,000 tolerance for the beta one. Good. And let's go ahead and save and calculate in G-code. So 
So now we're at 548. 548. So like I said, this is gonna, um, you know, the biggest thing that we come across is uh, iMachining on older machines. And iMachining works fantastic on older machines, but they just don't have the memory. So this is one way that you can go in there and reduce the amount of G code lines in there. Uh, so we're, I mean, you, you can see we went from 5,000 down to 550. Um, this is a, a way that you could speed up the process as well as the uh, the calculation time is going to be quicker for you right there as well. So, and you can set this up so it automatically has that turned on for you already uh, as a your template so it, and put that template as your default uh, operation and so that way every time you go to run a 3dm machining it will or 2dm machining it will look at that tolerance there so so we just got the question from brian uh what's the difference in runtime so with the tolerance set to 5000 this is about eight and a half minutes and I don't know if it'll really change too much, but let's see what happens when we uh, when we change that back to I think it was one. Just uncheck it. Or uncheck it. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so calculate. And you can even see the calculation time takes a little it's bit longer. So that yeah, looks like the same time. Yeah. Just a lot so less. So you're physically through. moving the same distance around the part, but in terms of the G code, it's less. And, you know, for the actual machine time, I would say it is not going to be the same just because uh, I'm guessing just kind of the way it's doing it right here. If we're running 5,000 lines of code versus 500 lines of code, obviously the machine time is going to be uh, faster, but it also depends on some of these newer machines can crunch through 5,000 lines of code in no time at all where these older machines, it's going to take a while. Um, yeah. So definitely that could be a, a factor there. And this is if we're not dependent on the, the machine or anything like that. This is just going off of the one post and Raji code. Yeah. So. That's a good question. I, I actually didn't even know about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I watched all the KevCam videos and I didn't remember that. So that's good that we brought that up. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is good for people who also uh, have limitations on their machine, like Kevin said. Some older machines, they probably don't have enough memory to actually hold this much, this large of a file. And like, again, like Kevin said, 3D I machining is mainly for roughing. So you don't need the super accuracy with some of the roughing that you're doing because you're leaving a lot of material for your finishing. You can save that accuracy, save for that, that fine tolerance for the finishing side of things. And then this guy, you can just do this in 500 lines of code versus the 5,000 lines of code, and you still have your part roughed out. So that's a, that's a good application there for a reduction of um, memory of the file. Um, okay, so any other questions on this or anything we've done previously? You can always put your questions in the questions panel. And uh, if we don't get to it today, because we're, we're probably out of time by now, but uh, we save the questions you give us either here or f uh, through email. Speaking of email, Kevin's going to put my email in the chat section. You can use that email to send us your questions, comments, and suggestions for Solid Camp Live. Uh, if you want your own personalized training, uh, absolutely, you can use that email to contact myself, and I'll put you in touch either with, with me for my calendar or any of the other guys on the, on the training team. Uh, personalized training is still using GoToMeeting, but it's over the phone. So you can ask your questions live over the phone or mic and speakers if you've got that set up as well. Um, and we can always talk live over GoToMeeting on your specific part. If your part is proprietary, remember we can sign anything you need us to sign to get us to take a look at that part. Um, and we do that a lot for some of our uh, more complex customers or military customers or anything like that. Anyone that doesn't really, uh, that has an issue with sharing data, remember we, we will always keep everything confidential, especially even if, um, even if you don't give us anything to sign, we're not sharing anything with anybody anyway. So you can always uh, trust us to, uh, <laughs> just, just not steal your designs. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll, we'll only uh, share them with the world unless you t tell us we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, you know us and and everyone on YouTube. So yeah, no, but we definitely will will hold everything that you send us confidential, uh, regardless of NDAs or not. Um, 
if you know anybody that can benefit from SolidCam, give them our contact info or get them to contact us. And if they go into a demo, you get that $100 gift card. If they go to sale, you get 20% of the sale. Uh, so that's a really great way to just get some extra cash just by letting us know that somebody could benefit from SolidCam. It helps the company and it helps you. So everybody gets a little bit of something. Uh, we will be continuing this until the end of the month, every day at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you have any questions and you can't attend the session, for instance, uh, I saved this until today because I knew Brian because he told me that he would not be available until today. Even though we record these, I like to make sure I answer the questions that you guys send us when you're still here, when you're in attendance, so we can get any kind of feedback or any kind of clarification. So if you send me a question, but you know you're not going to be able to attend or you'd like to specifically be in attendance when we answer your question, let me know when you'd like us to cover it and we will definitely cover it for you on the day that you request. Uh, but like I said, we're doing this every day until the end of the month, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we will talk to you guys tomorrow at that same time. Until then, stay safe, keep your family safe, keep busy. Talk to you guys tomorrow. See you guys.